Kiwi Squash Cast is an in-season pod and vodcast for New Zealand squash fans. Each episode gives an update on the squash scene from a Kiwi perspective. We cover local and international pro squash and provide updates on domestic events. In each episode, we feature interviews with persons of interest and tips for your squash game. Message if you have content that demands to be on the show. Subscribe to our social media accounts for updates. contacted me uh, a few months ago about sponsorship and then um, we set him up. Is he good or what? Uh, he's like, he's number one under 15 in New Zealand. Oh, is he? Yeah. So, oh. I mean, I guess that's... Oh, we'll, I think we'll I've seen him at a camp, hey? I think I've done one of his camps. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, possibly. Oh, I definitely have. Yeah, but, uh, so he's number one under 15, but now he's, he's 15 now, so, um, oh, okay. so he's no so longer he's in, in that, that age group. Yeah. Middle, yeah. Yeah. And uh, what else? Um, he's big for his age. He's a tall lad. So I watched him play at Henderson. First time I've seen him play really where I've looked at him. I mean, live. And I was pretty impressed, dude. Um, he's tall. Um, he's quick into the front. He can hit the ball straight from the front. Yeah. Something you might like to do. Take a leap out of this book. Uh, what else? Yeah. So I, I looked at him and I thought, you know, this dude's, this dude is, I, I like this dude. I like, and I also liked his manner on court. Um, obviously his dad's a little bit intense, but I'm an ex-squash parent. Um, you, uh, your dad was pretty intense, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw like twelve. I saw the Facebook live stream afterwards, and he was like twelve comments in a row. It's like ridiculous. Well, he had a funny thing. Where, it was like a shocking call, and he'd yeah. comment and be like, "Good call." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was into it. And then the, what we were seeing on the live stream was I don't know what sort of problems he's got at home with his internet or whatever, but yeah, yeah. he just kept rejoining the live stream like every five seconds. So it kept Paul Ice God was watching with you. Paul Ice God was watching. I'm yeah. like, "Come on, dude, sort your tech out." Yeah, he's probably, you know. But, um, so that was kind of humour, but, um, and he was banned, right? Was he banned by Squash Australia yeah, or, yeah, or did yeah. he just get a naughty letter? Ah, uh, I think it was a bit of both. One or the other. One or the other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. We can check this up. That's part of the humour. But anyway, back to Chris. So I, I went to Chris and I said, look, uh, okay. I said to his dad, um, that, you know, I liked, uh, what he was doing. Um, you know, especially his tall lad. It's from Blenheim, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. And... I spoke to him and he was, his dad was saying, oh, look, I'm spending thousands of dollars, you know, mm. take him to all these tournaments because he's playing Eden Epson this weekend, oh, uh, yeah. which is cool. And, um, and he came up, they brought Tom Marshall up to Henderson, which was cool. And he said, oh, I'm spending thousands of dollars. We're doing these camps in Midland with Nick Meter and we're doing this and we're doing <coughs> that. And I, I thought, you got to be kidding. I mean, the dude needs to hit with you guys. Um, cause he beat, he beat Jordan to lady, I think. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, he yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, okay. so he's like, oh, he's yeah. B2, <laughs> That's a he's B2 man. and he beat his first A grader. So, yes, um, that's mean. so that, that was pretty handy for a 15 year old kid. Yeah, he's probably so, um, him. I said to Luamba that we need to get this guy training with you guys, right? Well, Cause the whole point of Unscrushable. He's in Auckland this week. I'll hit with him. Yeah. I'm mean, the whole point of Unscrushable is that, you know, um, that's what we do. We develop players, right? And, and we do more than just supply you with gear. We actually take an interest in what you're doing. So, um, um, so I, anyway, I emailed them and I said, look, um, we're going to do some camps at some point with the junior unscorchable athletes. Are you interested? Um, but yeah, I might message him anyway. If he's say, in Auckland this week, I'll help him 100%. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Good what on else you. is he doing during the day? Yeah, up, yeah. Well, he's, well they probably come up late and just in time for their first round and whatever, whatever. But yeah, no, if he's up earlier, I'll message so he, him. Has he gone back? I would assume so. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. He must be. They must be getting mega. Um, That's a lot of flights. Air miles on. Um, yeah. <laughs> sure. I'm assuming in New Zealand, but anyway. All right. So. Um, that is thousands of dollars in. Yeah. Okay, we can do 84 hours of recording. Don't think we'll be here that long. Um, let's go to a little, uh, a little a cheat sheet. So, mate, um, straight off. Final performance at Tennyson. Um, pretty cool, dude. We'll just go back to that week before. So we've done our off-season training. We've planned towards peaking for this event. And then we got hit with lockdown, mm. uh, which was pretty grim. 
Uh, just tell us a bit about your emotions. If you can think back, what were your emotions like in that week? Whether we were going to play or not? Were we playing? Were we not playing? Um, it's funny because like I was carrying that little injury so um, in my groin um, the week before. So I played the Red Beach and it finished on the Sunday. And I think the same day the yep. lockdown was announced. Yep. Yep. And I was kind of like a little bit of relief because mm-hmm. I barely managed to scrape through that little tournament. Um, with the injury and then when the lockdown was announced it's kind of like oh okay it might, might give me another week to get my body right and um, so I had three days off court anyway obviously with the lockdown and then going into Henderson I was like I hadn't really I hadn't honestly hadn't lunged in it in like six days on my right leg so um, so I wasn't exactly that well prepared for it but um, I mean it was still still great to get on court with the, the 6k and have some opportunity at points regardless of my condition Yep. Um, but yeah, me personally, I wasn't exactly... Okay. So the rest of us were like massively relieved because we, we thought, here we yeah. go. We're back on I the roller coaster. I think I was definitely the opposite. Whereas you were, you, were, you were the, as usual, you were the outlier, yeah. uh, unlike everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess what I'd say, having said all that, um, as a group, we're pretty grateful to be able to play and to have these events. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, all, and to have fans there and have yeah. things relatively normal, even though it was restricted in Henderson. Yeah, still good to have... Um, the competition and everyone like kind of fired up and all the rest of it just have those emotions get going again especially like just in february as well because february just one of those months for squash where there's so many unknowns and seeing what people have done in january and yeah, december etc yeah. yeah. it, add, it adds more to the tournament i feel yeah that's true the, yeah it's always like i i agree when the first world series event comes on in september or, yeah. or october and you've seen all the pros doing their off-season training and you wonder like who's actually ready and who isn't. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, everyone's got yeah. new kits for the yeah. year and all that yeah. kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so you talked about the niggle you had coming into the tour- into the tournament, and I'll talk about that later. You've also got a bit of history with Leo where he's beaten you a couple of times and you can never relax when you play him. No. So when I, play- <laughs> when I played him last year at Red Beach, he beat me through love and then... Well, no, he beat me in five, I think. It was five, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then... Um, I played him at whatever time it was at Henderson. It said like a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he beat me three love on, on that court two. Court two, yeah. And just blasted me. Um, so I was really nervous going into that match. I wasn't very positive, to be honest. I was just like, I just got to try and get through this as uncomfortably as possible um, with my movement and whatever. Um, but yeah, managed to scrape through. I think, I think, yeah, a bit of luck, to be honest. But I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really have any words. I was just pure relief when I got that result. Pure relief. Yeah, well, I think... Um, what I think is you've got a lot better at... Um, sort of being present on court. Um, you've got a lot better mentally and emotionally with your squash. Um, and you've definitely got a lot more professional in the last two years. And I think that kind of paid off. Um, what I've got a question here later on about your control focus but I kind of feel like with the injury and with the guys you were playing it, it really forced you to, to think about how you were going to play even more so than normal because you could have been constrained with you know the, the, your opponent shooting and, and hitting yeah. lots of winners which Leo does and you could have been constrained by your movement yeah well everyone I've played there before I pretty much lost to apart from Finn because he hasn't played that much recently but we still had a massive five set at the uh, end of last year. So everyone that I played in that tournament, I had lost to before. Yeah. Once or twice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and you're, you're... So going to the Leo match, um, so we put up that little video of you diving. That was the first dive of the tourney. And um, I think we got a thousand views else, on that so far. Did anyone else dive? Uh, I, yeah, I don't remember. Um, yeah, actually, I'll have to check that. But it was certainly, it was a goodie. And you won the point too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got a thousand views on that. That was uh, whatever. That's pretty decent for us. It was worth it. Um, but in that match, you looked very tight, but you managed to hold your level and control what you're doing long enough to get a three love. Yeah, I think my squash was pretty crap that match. To be honest, I think it was woeful. I think I wasn't hitting any of my targets, and it was pretty all over the shop. But it was a very ugly one. Well, to be fair, you're a somewhat negative dude when it comes to these things in assessing your own performance. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. I. I you got better during the tournament. Let, let's say that. Yeah. yeah. And then the next round you had Finn. And Finn had a good win against Zach the night before. Yep. Um, but he just looked flat to me. He looked slow. What did you think? Um, yeah, definitely. I think 
I think I, I mean, I'm trying to play a lot faster as well at the moment. So I think I played, I executed that rel- relatively well against him. Like I feel like I was getting in front of him a lot, and I didn't think he could really deal with that or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, but I thought he was probably a little bit slow. Yeah. Um, yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah, I think so. He seemed to struggle for um, ideas of what to do, um, and he looked a little slow to me. But you know, he's a good battler, and it should be interesting to see see how he goes for the rest of the tournament. I mean, he came and did our off-season camp, did the week at Ruakaka, or he missed a couple of days, but he did most of the week. Um, his attitude there was really cool. Um, he put in a lot of effort. Um, so it's hard to know whether he's undercooked and needs more training and gameplay or whether he's actually overcooked and needs a bit of rest to sort of put yeah. it on the court. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Because um, he has been hitting with the guys in Hamilton. Uh, very recently, only the week before the tournament, I think, because he was moving. Okay. Um, so you played better in, in that game, and you started to really focus on hitting targets and selectively cutting the ball off. Um, and one thing that was quite impressive was how you were controlling your length. So you were hitting punch um, off-pace shots to get that two-bounce length into the, into the corners. Um, what was your focus playing Finn? Yeah, well, Finn's a taller guy, so like when you try and hit that length, I try and hit like a nice low hard length that he has to reach back and, and cut off. And with a bigger frame, that's kind of a lot hard to do. Yep. And it also kind of forces them, you know, knowing if they don't cut it off around the middle or towards the back of the service box, then it's probably, they're not going to produce a good shot. Yeah. So for him making an extra step forward and across is a lot harder to do. Um, and then I think hitting cross court as well, if you get a nice low hard cross past someone with that kind of frame, it's always going to hurt. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely trying to contain well, them like that yeah. and just look for the loose one. Really. Yeah, and, and they should be hunting the cross. So if you get it past them, um, there's a extra energy for them to get back, for sure. Chris yeah. Anderson. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but he has a bit of... Um, he's a big unit, so I understand what you're saying. Um, and then the next match... Um, well, straight after you, Louis lost to E.T., um, mm. which was um, good for Louis, I think. Well, I guess we'll see in the next two weeks mm. uh, whether it was good for him or not. Um, and then, but that was a five setter, so you knew you were going to get ET um, a little bit um, lacking in gas, probably. Yeah, I think the the kid's got a big engine on him. Um, but yeah, it was it was a, a good a good kind of preparation for me, I guess, going in you know two three setters, and then for him to have that big five setter earlier in the day was a obviously a, I think a help. Um, more probably mentally than physically. I don't think physically he didn't come across that tired massively. Uh, he looked tired at the end of the match with Louis. Yeah. Um, but I think mentally knowing that you've had that extra court time actually hurts a little bit more for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely to my advantage for sure. Yes. Um, same thing again. Um, I mean, you cooked it in the second. You had a good lead and you let him win a bunch of points in a row. You still come back to win it. But again, looking at it, it felt to me like your focus was about control and hitting targets and that kind of thing. And I mean, obviously, you you had a real good game plan against them in Nationals last year where you won three love as well, um, when you guys were both fresh in that huge 8-9 first round matchup. Um, it must have... But then you lost him at Henderson. So, yeah, it's, mm. it's niggly, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well, we've had some battles in the past or whatever. Um, but I think for me, I think knowing it's a 5K as well, like it adds more to it, whether it's a satellite... You know, you're going to have to claim the points, etc., etc. There's more on the line. Yeah. Um, first swallow it back, everyone's watching it. But I think the thing for me is just being nice and professional and trying to control and, you know, strangle people, as I like to say, on the court with your length and not giving them anything because part of that. Yeah. And, you know, when you play those those better players and it's just like, how do you get a point off them? Because they just seem to keep getting the ball back and they not give you anything. Yeah. And that's what I've been trying to do better. Um, for longer periods of time and that's, I think that's what worked well knowing knowing, I knew going into that match with Elijah if I can just stay nice and professional and keep strong and hold my level then you know he was going to feel as though he has to do something with the ball or whatever yep um, so yeah so um, you then make a final now you've never made a final of a 6k before now I know that you know people can say oh well it's COVID and reduced field no one from Hong Kong all that kind of stuff um but a good achievement for you and something to reflect on. What was your mindset going into that final? Um, what was my mindset? Um, 
yeah, difficult one. I don't know. I was just kind of thinking, just whatever it is, once this match is over, I just got to leave this tournament knowing that I've done everything in my power that I can control. Yeah. Um, to do the best I can with my performance and, um, you know, leave no stone unturned on the court, just give it up, give it everything and just giving myself that peace of mind knowing that I've done everything I think I could have done or prepared well, etc., etc. Um, now you played even about four times previously, I think, let's yeah. say, um, and each time you've been chopped, let's call it. Um, <laughs> and to be fair, the last two at Pamua and Nationals, You've still been beaten three love and you've still been chopped, but um, you've got into a few points and, and you've competed a lot better. Um, specifically, what were you thinking going into the match in terms of how you were going to approach it, game plan, um, and also trying to build belief? Not having one yeah. taken a game off him before. Well, the Pam Pam Urim Nationals, <laughs> I feel were like quite close together, so I didn't have like I knew, I felt like I knew how to start trying to really get into him, and obviously seeing Louis um, do so well against him at Pam and Nationals, yeah, um, kind of gave you a certain idea of what what was required, and having that time to reflect over over New Year's um, and January and stuff um, gave me a lot of time to kind of think about how I'm actually gonna what I can do against them with my game, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, and I just think I just executed it pretty well. I think that's all it was. And I think he was not a little, not undercooked, but he was just, a, you know, seemed a little bit vulnerable in the tournament. Um, yes, yeah. Well, he had that very hard match with Timwa on hard Saturday match morning. With Timur, yeah. yeah. And um, he definitely looked slow against Lance, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but he's really, obviously, he's really experienced, so he hold, held his level really well throughout the match. And he's very consistent. He doesn't, Seem to go through a lot of drop offs. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And that kind of thing. He kind of just stays the same the whole time, which is credit to his experience. Yeah, well, I guess we have a view that not many New Zealand PSA pros train professionally, but there's a tiny minority who do, and um, he's one of them. And you can see that in his performances over the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, it's obviously credit to his, his training and his work ethic, etc. Now, um, I probably, up in the bar in Henderson after the tournament, um, we did spend a bit of time talking about the refs. And uh, I don't really want to go into decisions too much, but you have any thoughts on the refereeing of that final? Yeah, was, I think someone said there was like 50 calls, um, which is, for any squash fan knows that that's an absolute ton. Um, Actually, think- it's good for a ref because it means... Good for Their rest. assessment counts. Yeah, <laughs> they had definitely. enough decisions. Yeah, definitely. But I think, I mean, even after the first set, there was a lot of st- like chat going going about, and I just don't think it was that well contained, to be honest. Um, you know, when again, I always say this, but when you're watching like the top world tour stuff on Squash TV, you, you don't see that stuff. People getting away with that stuff. So why should it be yeah. any different yeah. further yeah. down yeah. the tournaments? Yeah. yeah, and you know these, not to put any you know, shade on the national refs and stuff in New Zealand, but I feel as though they should kind of be following that suit or, you know, they should watch that stuff just as much as what we do as fans. Yeah, I think so. I think um, my comment would be the same as yours. The decisions are what they are and we may or may not have a different view. Um, I know that it's a lot easier watching replays to have different views. Um, So I'm not particularly concerned with the decisions. It's more the lack of control of the of the final and the quarterfinal, yeah. that would be my concern. Um, cool. All right, so you've had a lot of uh, messages of support, both during the event and afterwards. What's that been like? Yeah, it's been different. I've never had that experience before, <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, everyone's coming out of the woodwork, you know, which is nice in a way. Um, but yeah, it just kind of shows actually how many people are really kind of following or yeah, keep, keep their eye on you, sort of thing. Yeah, um, which was a new experience for me, but yeah, it's good. It was a nice feeling, and um, you know. Well, the thing is, you've been grinding away here in NZ for a, for a wee while. You're one of the few yeah. uh, people in this part of the world that's moved somewhere, left home um, to set up shop somewhere else to get better. So good on you. Um, sure. And uh, I guess these kind of results have been a long time coming in some regards. So if someone like me watching you play, I know that your level was potentially there, 
Um, you just mm. weren't putting it together on the court. Um, so it's no shock to me, but nice to get that support. Yeah, it's good to have that support. I mean, the, you said a lot there. That was a loaded, loaded kind of thing. But um, I don't know. There's so many things that went into it, like recently in the last year. Even like moving out of Excel and stuff like that. I've yep. had time to re- just relax and I'm a very fired up kind of person so, and very intense. So when I can kind of relax a bit more, I feel like that was that's helped my squash a lot. Yeah. Um, especially like going through that tournament, I don't wasn't carrying a lot of stress in my mind. It was just kind of just easier for me to relax, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, again, moving countries, there's so many things that you just said. But yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, well, that's yeah. what you got to do. I mean, not everyone's everyone talks about sacrifices. Some people talk yeah. about it. Some people do it. I think I guess that's our experience. Another in thing is, squash. Um, like I haven't come through the squash New Zealand system, so for me to see people that have kind of not not people who haven't necessarily followed me a lot because I've come through New Zealand and Australia and I've bounced back with them forward so yeah it's been harder for people to kind of follow me so, so to see that people have actually you know paid attention to me um, whilst I've been battling away was nice with the worst messages well I think you're losing the accent dude uh, or maybe I'm just getting used to it I don't know um, <laughs> but um, yeah um, so lots of messages from both sides of the ditch because you've got a bit of a support base in Christchurch, yeah? Yeah, a bit of family down there. <laughs> um, yeah. Few, Let's few, hope they put on a tournament down there yeah. uh, at some point, sometime Definitely. in the next century and then we can go down. Yeah, um, needs to get back together. Yeah, that'd be cool. No, that's good. So you didn't do anything yesterday, fair enough. <clears throat> Why should you? Um, but you've got to get the body working this week and fire up because we've got Doug Flint... Eden Epson Doug Flint Memorial Tournament coming up starting Friday night. Yeah, uh, 16 draw satellite, lots of names in the draw. Um, it's a good kind of, I think, unfortunately, the tournament is kind of shadowed out a little bit because of the, obviously, the 6K last week and then the 10K next week. Um, so it's kind of shadowed out a little bit, but it's still interesting to see how people turn up and what the attitude is going to be like. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm kind of shocked that um, there's, there's, there's a good two to five guys that aren't playing this tournament yeah. that should play the tournament, um, particularly the guys that are new on the tour, um, mm. not to play this tournament Get those points. is absolute yeah. nuts. And it, to me, it just shows that they're not professional. Um, yeah. Hopefully they'll get professional uh, at some point, but um, they're nuts not to play it because who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. I just remember like two years ago playing the Auckland Open and, um, like, I think I claimed like four and a half points or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. So yeah, take what you can get. I think you're silly not yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah, so that, that's interesting. But so we've had, got, we, we knew Evan wouldn't play. Um, I guess we knew Zach wouldn't play. Um, and obviously we knew you guys were going to play. Um, Anthony Lepper's uh, out post-surgery. Yeah. Elijah's home tournament. Dad's president's got to play. Probably would have played anyway. Um, but there's a few guys that are out. But then there's a few guys that are in, um, and we've got Michael Shelton Agers joined PSA. Good on you, Michael. And Gabe and Matt Lucinti are playing. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting one, I think. Is Matt seated to play? Oh, no, Gabe's playing Timor first round, and then yeah. Matt's seated to play Luamba second round if they get yeah. through. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I think those guys have got a lot of history. Yeah, it's going to be pretty juicy, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just new, new, new faces as well, yeah, which is yeah, exciting because yeah. a lot of these tournaments of the past six, twelve months have everyone's played everyone, um, so it's good. It's good yeah. to have variety. Yeah, that's right. Well, we haven't seen Matthew for a long time, and we haven't seen Gabe for a couple of years. Um, I mean, last week when I interviewed Luamba, I said to him I was really pleased that Lance was playing um, because it creates, you know, it, the more opponents, the more people that play, the better. Um, and it's good to see these guys finally playing after. Um, two years of not playing um, and fronting uh, finally. Um, and it's going to be pretty juicy. Yeah, looking forward to it, to be honest. just Again, I don't think I actually watched that much squash at Henderson either. Um, with kind of restrictions and stuff, I don't really want to hang around. Yeah, um, But I think this this week I'm definitely going to want to feast my eyes on, on yeah, those matches. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, And that's our feature match of uh, Friday night, 7.30 Friday night. Um, if you've got something better to do, move it uh, and tune in because... Gabe versus Timar on the show court, live streamed by uh, my good self. Um, that is going to be very, very juicy. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Okay, cool. 
Um, and you've got Mason first round, and you've played Mason a few times. I guess you'd hope to win that, but who knows? And then second round, you would probably meet Finn, although Finn's got an mm. interesting local rivalry against uh, Riley Jack. Riley Jack, yeah. yeah. Saw that. I didn't see. I, I saw Riley at, the, at Henderson, but I didn't see him play. So yeah, that's hard. Right. Again, yeah. a second tournament, and it's still hard to know what kind of form people are in. Um, but yeah, I mean, he trains pretty hard. That guy, I think he's quite fit, so it could yeah. could be a good match. Well, you played him at um, uh, in, in that Northland tournament we took you up to. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and um, the name of the club will come to me. My apologies. Manga car here. Manga car. Yeah, perfect. Played there before. Um, lovely two club court. Um, attached to a rugby club. Actually, I like those clubs because there's so many clubs like that in New Zealand where they added courts to rugby clubs yeah, and that, well. they must have all built them all the same time because there's two um, done side by side and um, I find those... I, I really like those clubs. I think they're really cool. Um, and you went up there and um, did the business. A bit like Red Beach. Although, obviously, yeah, Riley was tougher than the Red Beach... Um, yeah, uh, he's, not, he's, not easy, he's not easy to beat. He keeps running. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was good fun. And it was good for you to actually play that match, I felt. Um, sort of, um, I remember you got a couple of things out of that, which was good. Mm. So going through the rest of that draw at, at uh, Doug Flint, we've got Louis versus Ben Adams. Ben Adams just joined the tour, B1 from uh, the Bay. Um, I didn't see him play teams on the weekend, but it's good that he's backing up. Um, Matt versus Upper Junior. Um, you know, that'll be interesting. Uh, in the bottom half... Elijah plays club mate Taron. Um, we've got Lucas Rosser, who is absolute humour. I love that dude. Is that the guy from um, Wilson? No, he's the um, Brazilian guy. Um, he was at Palmy, not playing in the main draw, but the draw below. Um, there's always humour with that guy. Um, so he plays Glenn Timelton. Glenn's looking a bit um, undercooked, so uh, that, that might be interesting. I mean, I, I guess. I, I didn't see Glenn's yeah. results. In this yeah. Game. Who did Glenn play in that? Um, he lost to Lance in three in the first round. It was pretty quick, actually. Um, and then we've got Thames and Gabe obviously which is huge and the first match we're live streaming I think at 4 o'clock or 4.45 is Sean oh, I've got the time there 4.45 Friday afternoon Sean Wigan against Michael Shelton Ager and, and that, that should be a good match that's, I think that's interesting I think they might have played before <laughs> they played it they play uh, in Premier League or something like that no Sean didn't play Premier League um, yeah he didn't reply to the emails um, what was I going to say um but Michael did, and yeah, you know, Michael was quite interesting. He had his moments in UPL. He had a couple of big five series and stuff. Yeah, I he remember. did. No, but he had his moments um, where he looked real good. I think him and Sean kind of actually. I know Sean runs a lot, but I think they almost play a similar kind of short game with those like volley cross, um, yeah, short kills and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so that well, could be interesting. Yeah, Sean's always hunting the short ball. So um, jumping through to the likely second round matches, and please, uh, someone, if you think. You're offended because we don't think you're going to win the first round. Don't take it personally. Uh, it just is what it is. Pundits have to be pundits. Um, so we might see Louis play uh, Matt in the second round. And that'll be another live stream match on court to 10 a.m. Very juicy. Very, very juicy. Looking forward to that one. Um, could see yourself up against Finn or Riley Jack. Um, are you going to get sick of playing Finn all the time? or What do you reckon? I don't mind playing Finn. <laughs> don't mind playing Finn at all. Yeah, I guess you've had a good run. At some point, um, he'll get back at you for sure. Um, he's too good not to. Then Elijah will have Lucas or Glenn. He'd be pretty comfortable with that. Um, Tim or Gabe against Sean or Michael. Yeah, I mean, it's actually stronger because of those two guys playing um, as a satellite than it would otherwise have been. So it's, it's actually... It's a good level satellite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a good level yeah, satellite. It's reasonable, definitely. yeah. And then um, two matches Saturday and a final Sunday. Yeah. So have you got a prediction of who's going to win the tournament? Other than your good self, of course. I mean, um, I would like to say that. I know I might actually end up playing, but I'd like to think that Louis can bounce back after um, after last week, obviously just because I've got that belief in him being my teammate. But I know Tim has got unfinished business. Uh, he, he nipped some sort of thing. I yeah. Mean, I know he won that tournament last year, so he'll be feeling confident as well. So I think those two boys need a big week this week. They've both lost out in the quarters. Yeah. So, you know, that's two less matches and a lot of, well, well, me as well, but some of these other guys as well played it, played out those matches, um, whereas they didn't at Henderson. Yeah. So um, they, I think they should be feeling fresh and fired up for this one, yeah. 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 yeah well, I, I'm going to say that um, the Panda is going to defend. That is my prediction. Okay. Um, 
Okay. You're all good? Uh-huh. Should we keep going? Uh-huh. Put my little crispy there. 50 bucks. Actually, Louis owes me a crispy too. I said to him if he didn't win it, I'd, um, he'd have to pay me for his headband because he's lost about three of them. But there you go. Um, okay, so that's our review ready for Eden Epson. Juicy. Um, lots of live streaming. Um, so if anyone wants matches, to watch yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Matches, yeah. I mean, not everything's being live streamed, but all the key ones are. Yeah. Men's and women's. Um, is it Court 2 that live streamed or Court 1? Court 2, yeah. Court two. yeah. So um, what I was going to say is women's draw... Um, Oh yeah, I've never been known to uh, offend anyone, but at the risk of offending anyone, Honestly, didn't um, my own view is they should probably um, have just made it an eight draw. But um, everyone's entitled to their opinion. There's some good matches there actually, um, and I haven't put this on the order of play, but we're going to see um, Grace play Crystal That's on um, last match on Friday night. Grace is coming be up for a lot of these tournaments. Eh? Yeah, she is. Yeah, good on her. Could give her credit for that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice work, Grace. Yeah, no, it's good Making actually. Making effort. Not many other people do that. Yeah, she is. Um, um, and uh, how did she go last week? Lost to Lauren, I think, three love. So um, she's third seed for this tournament, effectively. Um, seeded to Who's meet it? Grace. Seeded oh, to really? meet uh, Abby in the semis. So if she can get through there, that'd be good. How did um, Abby go last week? She didn't play. Yeah, she, she was off sick. I, I yeah. thought I saw her there, though. Yeah, no, she did support. You know, she's, she came and watched a few uh, people play, so that's all good. Um, she's good. always good that's like good that, good which is great. Uh, Emma's playing top seed. Uh, no Lana. Um, oh, is Lana not playing? No, Ella Lash, fourth seed. Why not? Abby, pff, you'd have to ask her, bro. Um, got so, a few interesting names. It's good to see Ashley Pepper playing. She's joined PSA. Um, oh, that'll really? be cool. Um, Joey plays Zoe that'll be humour um, yeah no there's some, some good matchups there yeah like I say without it's being harsh my view should have been an 8 draw but anyway yeah. um, especially for hopefully, a PSA. yeah hopefully the people that are playing first round um, will enjoy the experience and um, you know they'll be hungry for more yeah cool alright and then after um, after this one we're straight into Auckland Open which is a 10k which is huge um, and you're seated to play Evan again in the second round. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? I love it. It's good. I'm really looking forward yeah. to that match, um, if it happens. Uh, big points, though. For, for a 10K, everyone in that tournament is going to benefit massively from those points. Yeah, true. Um, Actually, before we say that, so you you coming second, making the final, get 65 points, probably gets you to around the 210 level on ranking, yeah. which would be a nice move down because you've been drifting up with everyone else overseas yeah, it's playing been, it's and getting annoying. boosted. I've been sitting yeah, at yeah. 230 and 240 for yeah, so exactly. long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. It's getting old. Satellites just yeah. don't give you that opportunity yeah. to make such a breakthrough like they did at Henderson. So no, that's those, right. point, those points make a huge difference. I mean, yeah. if I can repeat that ne- next week, that I'm... Um, at Auckland Open, God knows how many points that is, but yeah, that yeah, are, yeah. Well, be... it's one thirty for second, so it's pretty decent. Yeah, that's yeah. massive. Yeah. That's huge points. Yeah. Massive um, points. So, um, so this tournament this week, um, I didn't pick you to win. Sorry about that, but um, <laughs> that's, that's just the that's reality. <laughs> you know, I call it how I see it. Um, <laughs> Full and, match balls, though. Yeah, you had your chances. Actually, we didn't rant about that. Maybe no, we'll man. rant about that some other time. <laughs> I thought you played really well. Uh, it's good credit to you on the weekend. I know I'm changing the subject here, but. Uh, going back to that, but um, um, nice for you to get a lot of time on court with Evan and sort of show that uh, even though he was probably a little bit affected by um, the previous matches that he played, yeah. that you can at least compete at somewhere near that level. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't want to. I personally aren't getting too wound up by it. Obviously, um, if I had actually won the match with those four match balls, that that could have had a difference story obviously but yeah uh, i don't want to get too wound up by it. i know that he wasn't playing his best squash and i know that he's going to come back hungrier yep. and playing at a higher level so i'm not going to get too wound up by it and have some false sense of reality yep. but um you know well we've got an interesting thing going on now for the first time in a really really long time is we've got a group of players um and in the past i don't know if we've even had one player that actually can compete with evan yeah um, domestic domestic i don't yes. think he's been yeah. pushed in yeah, so I mean that's kind of interesting now. So he's coming into these draws, and he realizes that um, he's got a few more um, targets on his back. I guess if that's a bit harsh to say, but um, yeah, it's, it makes it very interesting. Yeah, it makes it quite exciting. I, I have to say, from our point of view, obviously. Yeah, I think everyone's tuning in as well. Like everyone, 
all the messages that I've got, it just shows that everyone's kind of following and everyone wants to see what's going to happen happen next. And Evan's obviously, he's, yeah, again, got the target on his back or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. It, it adds a lot of value to these tournaments with with us pushing. And if it wasn't for those tournaments, then we wouldn't have that opportunity. So it's great. It's bloody brilliant. Yeah, it's true. I mean, fans will always watch their favorite athlete win a match. Um, but Joe Public's not going to watch a three-love thrashing. Yeah. Um, well, I'm personally excited by it as but, well, just yeah, as a fan, yeah, seeing Louis yeah. and Tim will push him, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. etc. Yeah, um, so, I agree. Yeah. So we've got Auckland Open the week after Doug Flint, so we're not selling Doug Flint short. That's going to be awesome. Uh, remember Dougie doing his riffing and uh, was a member of Ed Nipson myself back in the day, so it's cool to uh, recognise him. And uh, um, then we've got the Auckland Open at North Shore, and then after that, um, there's the, the big cash event at uh, Fokutani. Yeah. Um, do you are you going to play that or you're not sure? Uh, I don't know how to doubt it to be honest. Okay. I mean that tournament seems a little bit um, I don't know not far fetched, but it's just a bit it's a bit of a weird one to see on the calendar. Yeah, it's been the amount of prize money going into yeah. it um, for a satellite. I mean I don't really fancy driving all the way there for thirty points if I win, um, especially with the depth of draw and how hungry everyone's going to be for the money. Okay, so and yeah, well I think it's not yeah it'll something. be interesting to see if if they change the format. In future years, because I think in the past the prize money has worked for them to attract the players, but the word this year is that it's not me, going to work for me. Um, as so a player, it's interesting. Yeah, for me, for me as a player, it's kind of frustrating because it's like you've got a person getting behind squash who's got that kind of money, which is great. Yeah, but they're putting it in the wrong area, in my in my opinion, as yeah, a PSA yeah, player. Yeah, and right. with the amount of people that have joined PSA this year, yeah. why not offer more PSA points? For, for a tournament if you've got that much prize yeah money. well there could have been a 10 uh, with exactly. a 50 prize thing look I think at the end of the day it's their tournament and it's their right to do what they want with it yeah. and good luck to them Definitely. and it's, I, I'm personally want to congratulate them for putting on an event like yeah, that still it's a lot um, more than what anyone else but you're right everyone has their own opinion about what would be more effective for them and, and I understand that um, so we've got Fokutani and then we're back to Royal Oak now um, I spoke to Louis last week and he said he might skip Royal Oak um but having lost on the weekend, who knows? He might have to play it. True. Um, it's still worth you playing satellites points-wise because your average is such that 30 um, is quite helpful. And I would imagine you'll play Royal Oak. Yeah, uh, it's close to home, so I'm going to play it, yeah. All right, and then Morrinsville is the week after that. And Morrinsville is a 3K, so 65 for the win. Um, points, you'll play so that 65 as 65 well. points if you win that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely worth playing. Yeah, 100%. I'll probably make, a, make an appearance there. Now, PSA have come out and said that they're going to extend the half-price offer on these events for, uh, until the end of July. So we'd hope that some of the other events will get boosted. Hopefully the Bay, Lower North yeah. Island, maybe South Island will front up for a change and put something on. Um, but um, uh, So there could be more, but there may not be more, so you've got to take these opportunities. Yeah, um, you mean as a player, you can't kind of live your life like that, can you? Hoping there's going to relying yeah. on promoters and stuff. Yeah, so what's there, you take it yeah. yeah, in front of you right. exactly. So. Yeah. So yeah, but it would so, be good if there is some tournaments in the South Island. I would love to see that. Yeah. You, know, you forget there's a whole other part of the country that isn't even hosting. Well, you, these no, of course we don't forget that there's an old home. They used to host events down yeah. there. Um, obviously, when PC was still playing the fives and tens, and they'd have two or three down there as part of the circuit. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen anything for a while. Um, obviously, um, you know, that's fair enough. But um, if they want um, good players down there, then um, the players are keen to go. They just need to set something up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Um, but even like with just grace and stuff, like people like that rocking up at these yeah, ones, it shows yeah. that there's something going on down there. It's just... Yeah, well, I had a rant to, the, um, to, to Janet Udi on the weekend. I said, well, you know... Um, why don't you guys put your travel money into uh, prize money and then you guys don't have to travel and uh, the players can come to you for experience. But um, I've had that rant before. See how it goes. Not holding my breath. Yeah. Um, after Morrinsville, there is um, Easter, I think, and then there's New Zealand doubles. You can play New Zealand doubles? I'm still searching for a partner. It's tough. It's not easy for me because, um, well, Zach's with... Because, what, well, no one likes you. Is well, that the reason? Yeah, I'm not my <laughs> favourite. But Zach and Finna together, and then you got the brothers, Tim and Louie, and then yep. I'm kind of left on my lonesome. Um, but, yeah, got to do a bit of lobbying before I can enter that one. Okay, all right. And, look, I know you haven't played a lot of doubles, but actually, big court doubles suits you because your movement to the front's pretty good, and um, 
you can cover the court pretty well. Yeah, I love some doubles uh, on that left wall. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So you're keen to play, um, you just need a partner. Yeah. And since you've been jilted by Luamba, uh, fair enough for his brother, then you're kind of stuck a little bit. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully someone will um, feel sorry for you. Um, and then in terms of the mix, um, similar kind of story. Yeah, I think the, the girl squash is kind of, if I'm honest, struggling at the moment. Not a lot of depth there. I thought Kate almost came back, which adds a bit of value there. Yeah, but, actually true. That's, um, that's very juicy. But I don't know. I can't, yeah. can't see myself partnering with anyone. Any yeah. Females at the moment. Yeah, I think she's partnering with Evan. Um, yeah. And she's playing Auckland Open. Royal Oak, maybe too, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure about the others. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. And again, it's good to have these athletes coming back and playing. Uh, makes it juicy, makes it interesting. So, um, certainly uh, certainly keen to see that happening. Mm. Definitely. Um, and then uh, after that, we get New Zealand Junior Open, some couple of junior events, and then come May, there's a few more satellites in Auckland, but um, there's a few around the regions, Waikato Open probably, um, uh, probably Bay of Plenty, and I guess you may or may not play those. It just depends um, how things pl- pan out. Yeah, I guess now like, well, there's playing them and there's claiming them with satellites, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to play, not going to claim them now unless I get into the into the final and win. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, soon, not quite yet, but soon you'll be at a soon. point where, yeah, unless you win it, it's not worth claiming. Yeah. I mean, I want I want to make that jump into like the top two hundred, yeah. so it's hard that's to do right. that. And then with the cost of travelling and accommodation yep. and that kind of thing and losing income that weekend that you're playing them, it starts to get marginal to travel for a satellite. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay, all right. Uh, just to put some context on it, um, which is quite true, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and then nationals at the end of June uh, or end of July, depending which thing you read, whether you read PSA or Squash New Zealand, they seem to have different views on that. Um, <laughs> to be honest, that might jump around a little bit. I mean, if they continue with this hope that PC and... Uh, Joel are going to come back for Nats, then it could bounce around like it did last year. Yeah. It is what it is. I guess the sooner we know for sure, the better. Um, and they're changing the format to make it two divvies, um, not a full uh, competition. Do you have any thoughts on that or are you not really bothered? I didn't even know that was happening. <laughs> there you go. See, okay, you're out of touch, brother. Um, cool. Okay, and then I guess the other interesting thing in that period of May, June squash is that we will be training hard for nationals. So... You know, yeah. there'll be some pretty heavy physical stuff going on. So there's going to be some patchy uh, performances as some of the athletes try and um, build their base and play at the same time. Yeah, I think um, there's always that, that period every year or in the New Zealand season um, before nationals where everyone kind of has that. There's a little bit of a break. Yeah. Everyone kind of comes into Nats ready, ready to fire. Um, so it's always interesting. Kind of like just that tournament that just went. It's always interesting to see how everyone comes back after a little bit of time off whatever it may be yes, that time yes. Frame. yeah yeah that's yeah. right yeah I mean that's is going to be very interesting again um it'd be interesting to see how they do the draws there's a little bit of uh commentary shall we say do you know about the seedings uh it's in Hutt Valley uh in Wellington oh that's right um yeah yeah, yeah. That's, a new, um, that's a new one yeah it's a new facility not sure about the courts I haven't been there um hopefully the gaps on the movable walls aren't the same size as unitech um i guess we'll see uh, when we get down there but it's the same for everybody so um we'll just get used to it yeah more gaps in the walls for evan to hit i don't know it's the front wall gaps that are the worst yeah, you know no, so the back wall yeah, 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 but, yeah side walls are what they are we'll but yeah, yeah um okay so um anything else you want to cover brother or well, not that I can think of, to be honest. Yeah, you're kind of, I'm kind of whacking you out here. You need another cup of coffee. Yeah. All right. So, well, hey, look, congratulations on your performance at Henderson. Well done. Um, took the opportunities in front of you. Um, in my view, went up a gear in terms of your on-court level. And um, good on you. Thanks. Good luck for the rest of the season, bro. Sweet. Fire up. <laughs> okay. Let's see how that works out. <laughs>